In mid-2024, the paleontological world unveiled a discovery that redefined ceratopsian evolution, loci ceratops ranchiformis. It is not merely its body mass, but its cranial ornamentation that commands scientific attention. This species boasts the largest and most bizarre frill horns ever found in the fossil record. With its spectacularly curving architecture, it looks as though it is wearing a giant regal crown. This majestic appearance establishes Lococeratops not just as a creature, but as a masterpiece of natural selection, where the display of power was paramount. The scientific name tells a story of chaos and confusion among paleontologists. Lococeratops translates to Loki's horned face, referencing the Norse god of mischief, whose curved helmet bears a striking resemblance to this dinosaur's distinctive horn arrangement. The comparison runs deeper than mere appearance. When researchers first studied the skull, its unique features forced them to completely redraw the evolutionary family tree of horned dinosaurs, creating the same kind of scholarly upheaval that Loki might have enjoyed. The species name Ranchiformis means reindeer-shaped, highlighting the most puzzling aspect of this creature, its asymmetrical horns that curve differently on each side of its massive skull. The fossil emerged from the Kennedy Cooley rock layers in northern Montana, just miles from the Canadian border. This region exposes rocks from the Judith River Formation, deposited approximately 78 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. The timing places Lociceratops a full 12 million years before Triceratops walked the Earth, shattering assumptions about when horned dinosaurs reached their peak size and complexity. These ancient giants achieved enormous proportions much earlier in their evolutionary history than scientists previously believed. The world that Lociceratops inhabited bore no resemblance to today's stark Montana badlands. During the Campanian Age, a massive inland sea split North America into two separate landmasses. The Western Interior Seaway stretched from the Arctic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico, leaving Lachiceratops stranded on Laramidia, a narrow continental island running along the western edge of North America. This isolation created a unique evolutionary laboratory where species developed in relative seclusion from their eastern relatives. Montana's ancient landscape supported dense, humid, subtropical swamps rather than the arid plains we see today. Towering conifers and lush ferns created a verdant canopy over meandering rivers and stagnant pools. The warm, wet climate fostered incredible biological diversity that seems almost impossible by modern standards. Within the same geological layers that yielded Lococeratops, paleontologists have identified four other distinct species of horned dinosaurs living simultaneously in the same region. This extraordinary concentration of ceratopsian species challenges our understanding of how large herbivores organize their ecosystems. Today, you rarely find more than two or three large mammal species sharing the same habitat without significant ecological separation. Yet the Kennedy Cooley deposits reveal Lociceratops coexisting with Judaceratops, Medusa ceratops, and several other massive horned dinosaurs within a relatively small geographic area. The fossil evidence suggests these weren't isolated populations occasionally crossing paths, but established communities where multiple giant herbivores maintained stable populations side by side. The specimen designated EMK012 represents one of the most complete ceratopsian skulls ever recovered from this time period. Its preservation allows researchers to examine fine details of bone structure and growth patterns that reveal how this animal lived and interacted with its crowded world. The skull's unique features suggest that visual communication played a crucial role in maintaining social order among these competing giants. The massive frill of Lociceratops presents a fundamental engineering problem that challenges everything we think we know about dinosaur combat. This enormous structure created tremendous wind resistance that would have made quick movements nearly impossible. The neck muscles required to support such a burden would have consumed enormous amounts of energy just to keep the head upright during normal activities. Physical examination reveals the frill's internal architecture contains two large fenestrae, essentially giant holes that reduced the bone's weight but created significant structural vulnerabilities. These openings weren't minor features. They represented major weak points throughout the structure. The bone itself measured only a few centimeters thick in most areas, 
creating a structure more comparable to delicate china than military armor. The frill's surface contained vascular grooves that indicate extensive blood supply to the overlying tissue. These channels created pathways throughout the bone structure, making the entire frill a highly vascularized organ. Any damage to this system would have caused severe bleeding, turning the supposed shield into a liability that could have endangered its owner. Hollywood has trained us to envision dinosaur battles as brutal head-to-head -head collisions with horned species charging at each other like medieval knights. Lokiceratops completely defies this narrative through its horn arrangement and structural design. The post-orbital horns curve dramatically outward and backward, positioning them at angles that would make forward combat mechanically impossible. The horn cores themselves contain another surprising feature, extensive pneumatization that extends over 120 millimeters into their length. Air-filled sinuses, known as corneal diverticuli, hollowed out the internal structure more extensively than any other known ceratopsian species. This pneumatization reduced weight but created horns that were essentially lightweight tubes rather than solid battering rams. During a hypothetical collision, these outward curved horns would either deflect harmlessly off an opponent or lock together in an awkward tangle. The physics simply don't support their use as penetrating weapons. The angles and structural properties make them perfect for display purposes, but completely inadequate for delivering fatal blows to rivals or predators. The absence of a prominent nasal horn further reinforces this conclusion, removing the primary offensive weapon that characterized most other horned dinosaur species. These anatomical contradictions demand a completely different explanation for why such elaborate features evolved in the first place. Costly signaling theory reveals why Loki ceratops evolved such seemingly wasteful anatomical features. Growing and maintaining that enormous frill demanded massive amounts of calcium, protein, and daily calories that could have been used for muscle development, fat storage, or immune system function. The biological message was unmistakable. Only an exceptionally healthy individual could afford to invest precious resources in such an elaborate ornamental structure while still thriving in a competitive environment. The energy requirements for frill maintenance represented a significant biological investment. Calcium deposition alone would have required constant foraging for mineral-rich plant materials, while the extensive vascular network needed continuous blood flow to keep the tissue alive. A weak or malnourished Lococeratops simply couldn't sustain such an expensive display, making the frill an honest indicator of genetic quality and overall fitness. This biological investment functioned like wearing heavy military medals or an elaborate ball gown. These accessories don't improve running speed or fighting ability, but they communicate social status through their very impracticality. The frill announced to rivals and potential mates that its owner possessed genes robust enough to waste energy on pure decoration and still dominate its territory. Confrontations between rival Lococeratops may have resembled strategic warfare rather than brutal combat. Based on the anatomical evidence, when facing a challenger, the dominant individual could have lowered its head and raised its frill, creating a massive wall of asymmetrical spikes. The sheer visual impact of this hypothetical display often would have eliminated the need for physical contact, as subordinate individuals recognized the size differential and retreated without engaging in dangerous combat. During mating season, the blood-rich frill served an entirely different purpose. The extensive vascular network could potentially flush the skin covering with vibrant colors, creating dynamic visual displays that communicated emotional states and reproductive readiness. Males with the largest, most colorful frills would have attracted the most desirable mates, ensuring their genetic lineage continued into future generations. The species name Rangiformis provides crucial insight into the horn arrangement's true function. Modern caribou possess antlers that are almost never perfectly symmetrical between left and right sides. Each individual develops unique patterns that serve as personal identification markers within the herd. Loki Ceratops exhibited the same asymmetrical pattern with seven spikes on one side of the frill and six on the other, creating distinctive visual signatures. These asymmetrical horn arrangements functioned as individualized identifiers rather than mass-produced weapons. Each Loki Ceratops possessed a unique spike pattern that would have allowed species recognition in dense forests populated by multiple horned dinosaur species. 
The Kennedy Cooley fossil assemblage contains five different ceratopsid species within an extremely narrow geological time frame, representing the highest ceratopsid diversity known from any single assemblage. This suggests that visual identification systems were essential for maintaining species boundaries and preventing hybridization. The elaborate ornamentation patterns discovered across different ceratopsian species reveal sophisticated social communication systems that operated through visual displays rather than physical violence. These complex societies functioned through ritual and display rather than the brutal warfare we've long imagined. The sophistication of these ancient societies extended far beyond what we see in the fossil record. Male dinosaurs likely engaged in elaborate courtship displays, showcasing their magnificent frills like peacocks displaying their plumage. The forest floors became stages for complex social interactions, where dominance was established through visual spectacle rather than bloody combat. Herds probably moved in organized formations, with the most ornately decorated individuals leading from the front while displaying their unique spike patterns to maintain group cohesion. Based on their anatomical features, these dinosaurs developed communication systems that may have rivaled modern bird displays in their complexity. The asymmetrical horn arrangements allowed instant individual recognition within groups, while the massive frills served as billboards advertising genetic fitness and social status. Males would have competed for prime territory and mating rights through increasingly elaborate displays, driving the evolution of ever more spectacular ornamentation across generations. Loci Ceratops proves that aesthetics functioned as an evolutionary driver, just as powerful as raw strength or speed. Natural selection favored individuals who could invest the most energy in ornamental features while still maintaining their health and territory. This biological arms race produced creatures that were essentially living works of art, with each species developing unique decorative signatures that prevented interbreeding and maintained species boundaries in crowded ecosystems. The extreme specialization that made Lococeratops so visually stunning may have ultimately contributed to its disappearance from the fossil record. These magnificent creatures lived around 78 million years ago during the late Campanian period, vanishing well before the famous asteroid impact that ended the age of dinosaurs. Environmental changes likely stressed populations that had invested heavily in ornamental displays, potentially at the expense of adaptability. When climate conditions shifted or food sources changed, their elaborate headgear may have become a liability rather than an advantage. The high level of endemism among centrosaurine dinosaurs contributed to their vulnerability. Species like Lociceratops occupied relatively small geographic ranges, creating populations that may have lacked the genetic diversity needed to survive environmental challenges. Their specialized ornamental signaling systems, while advantageous for mate selection and species recognition, potentially limited their ability to respond to ecological pressures or catastrophic events. Small endemic populations faced additional risks from their limited distributions and specialized requirements. The investment in costly ornamental features may have reduced resources available for other survival traits, making these dinosaurs particularly susceptible when conditions changed rapidly. Their beautiful but fragile anatomy could not adapt quickly enough to new challenges. The story of Loki's Ceratops stands as a testament to evolution's creative power and the delicate balance between beauty and survival. These creatures reached the pinnacle of ornamental evolution, developing display structures that exceeded anything seen in modern animals. They ruled their ancient world as living crowns of biological artistry, yet their extreme specialization made them vulnerable when pushed to evolutionary extremes. Today, this discovery forces us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about dinosaur societies. Loki's Ceratops reveals that the Cretaceous world was far more sophisticated than we ever imagined, where evolution crafted artists as well as warriors. The discovery challenges us to look beyond the Hollywood image of dinosaurs as simple brutes and recognize them as complex social beings capable of elaborate communication and display. Their massive frills and asymmetrical horns served as biological masterpieces, conveying status and identity through visual signals that required no violence to be effective. Found alongside four other ceratopsid species in the same narrow geological time frame, Lociceratops represents part of the highest diversity ever documented in a single assemblage, revealing ecosystems where appearance determines survival and beauty 
became the ultimate evolutionary strategy.